Hi everyone, welcome to a new video where we are going to hopefully address the algae issues going on in this relatively new Iwagumi Aquascape in the Noir's 8 Escaper Line 60. I swapped this for a Dragonstone based Iwagumi during the Christmas period because I was experiencing severe BBA pretty much throughout the scape. I'm not sure exactly what the root cause of the BBA was so I'm a little bit worried that it's just going to come back again. But at the moment we're dealing with all different types of algae. What I did with the Dragonstone scape was remove all of the plants, kept the healthiest portions of mini hair grass here, Eleocaris, Priscilla, threw away the, the pearl weed, the Hemiaphthus, Microaphthamoides. I just got fed up with maintaining it. Such a fast growing stem, a bit of a weed really. Fancy the change. So I've put some mature Eleocaron Vietnam in here donated by Dave from Aquarium Gardens, and also some Eleocaris montedevensis. Now, there's multiple issues going on here at the same time, so I thought this would make an interesting video for some of you that may come across these issues or have these issues already, and just see how I deal with them, hopefully, and I will do an update video. We used to be kind of reluctant to make this kind of video because as a creator, you want to show off the best of your your thing but I think in the interest of authenticity and transparency it's important to share the, the perceived failures as well as the successes. We often see YouTube creators showing off just beautifully immaculately maintained aquariums. I like to be a bit more contrary maybe and showcase the, the reality of the hobby which does include failure or perceived failure as we have here. So I'll go through what I can see, what the issues are, get some appropriate footage of those, and then look at how we're going to address those individual issues. So the first thing I can see is a load of hair algae building up on the top of the stone, the main stone there, Siriu stone, no doubt caused by the intense lighting directly almost above that stone. So that should be relatively easy to deal with, maybe just scrubbing off and then maybe reducing the lighting, maybe using some floating plants, maybe even treating it with the APT fix uh, with every water change, literally just almost using a small paintbrush and painting it on um, just to prevent the algae buildup. It's not going to affect anything else in the water column. So this is probably one of the most appropriate times you should use an algae side, I would suggest just to maintain an algae free hardscape if that's what you want. Other issues, starting from the front, we do have a lot of the Eleocaris piscilla here is covered in different forms of algae. There's some BBA, there's some staghorn, there's some diatoms. The actual front glass is covered in green dust algae. And in fact, all of the glasses. The, some of the Eleocaulon is covered in diatoms and, and sort of brown algae, some green spot algae. The Elia Chorus Montedevensis, most of it is dying off. So we've got some real kind of brown leaves, which is where the plant obviously isn't surviving, but there are some, it looks like there are some green leaves, but I think I might just remove it all completely. I'm not sure yet, we'll see how we go. I planted some of the Helanthium quadricostatus just to add as an extra texture amongst the area can on Vietnam. Glassware needs cleaning, the glass obviously needs cleaning. Um, there's not much surface agitation, so we've got this scum build up on the surface as well. So in my mind that shows that we haven't got enough surface agitation, so the filter will need cleaning. We can do that temporarily just to clean the surface. Excuse the noise, quite like the noise to be fair. So lots to do, I'll take you through the whole process and hopefully by the end of the video it will look just put that back again, a bit noisy. So obviously lots to do, take you through the whole process, then I'll talk through what I'm going to do in the longer term to hopefully prevent the algae and the plant issues from recurring. Hope you enjoy it. If you do enjoy the video, hit the thumbs up, it really means a lot, and subscribe if you haven't done so yet. It'd be really great to get aquascaping out there and more people seeing the authentic side of aquascaping. <laughs> okay, now it's time to deal with this algae. So first thing I'll do is clean the glass. A couple of tools I'll use for this, the Denelay Cleanator scraper, and then if necessary, toothbrush, which I'll probably use on the rock and the corners of the tank. And then if you don't have a scraper, uh, like this fancy one, you can use a 
credit card or hotel key card, which I've got here. So yeah, let's crack on with that. Let's start off with the Dunlay Cleanator. Okay, toothbrush in the corners of the silicon. The Uwase Scaper line does have minimal silicon, but it does over time get covered in very stubborn green algae, which you're wise to remove frequently before it builds up too much and always stains it. And it can be really, really stubborn to remove. Okay, so that's the majority of the glass clean. Now it's time to clean the bottom areas. Now the best thing to do is use the scraper here. Again, you can look down the side of the tank to see what areas need doing. Credit card or hotel card come in handy. Just get in the corners there. Okay, so that's the glass cleaned. Okay, now it's time to attempt to address all of the algae on the plants themselves. Now, interestingly, I think it's safe to say the most algae on the plant indicates the unhealthiest part of the plant. So, for instance, with the hair grass, it will make sense to just trim that blade all the way back, and then that's gonna help promote new growth. So if the system overall is healthy enough, it's gonna just carpet uh, more prominently. So all of the worst affected algae infested hair grass leaves, I'm just going to trim. Now, it's a different story of the Aero Kaolon. It's kind of got a combination coating of diatoms, green spot algae, and uh, some staghorn, etc. So I think what I'm gonna do is just do it on a case by case basis. Look at each blade, try to rub some of the algae off maybe. If I feel intuitively that it's beyond kind of repair, if you like, beyond economical repair, then I'll just remove that blade. And to do that, rather than trimming it, because it's a rosette plant, we need to actually remove it from its um, rose, from its um, rootstock, if you like. So I'll show you how I do that. Interestingly, the Quadrico starters has no signs of algae at all. And in my mind, this indicates because it's a new plant directly from the one to grow, super resilient to algae. It's just one, it's just growing really fast. And a fast growing plant tends to repel algae. The Monster Defensis, I think I'm gonna take it all out. And if there's any like really healthy bits left over, I may replant those. Um, but I do have some other plants, which I'll show you at the end to add to the scape. And I'm also thinking of improving the actual rock layout. We've got a beautiful stone here, but the secondary stone here is too small. It's soon going to be covered with the plants. And there's a third stone here again, which is too small. You probably can't even see it. So I'll leave them in here for now, but I think I'm, I will be going to the aquarium gardens over the next day or so, and I'll get some better stones uh, to replace these and come up with a, uh, a really, hopefully, a beautiful Sanzon Iwagumi. First job, we'll trim the hair grass and then we'll look at the, the other plants after that. So here's a good example of the different states of the hair grass. We've got BBA building on here, so I'll trim those right back. You can see some very healthy growth around here, so we'll leave that. And then we've got, let's see the brown kind of blades. That's either dying off or coated in diatoms, so I'll trim those back as well. So quite a time consuming process. But again, it's an opportunity to exercise a little bit of mindfulness. I do have another pot of Eliocaris Priscilla to prepare in pot amongst any of the kind of open areas to help improve the overall biomass, which will then help to prevent future algae. So yeah, let's carry on with uh, trimming back the algae infested leaves and enjoy the process. <laughs> okay, here's a good example of how the hair grass has developed. So we can see some distinctly healthy portions and some not so healthy covered in algae. The good news is that those bright white roots indicate that the overall the plant is relatively healthy. So I, can, I could split this up, obviously discard, separate the unhealthy from the healthy, and that's gonna carry on carpeting. Okay, that's the majority of the hair grass sorted really actually enjoy that process, just paying real close attention to what you're doing and ignoring 
thinking mind <laughs> and just focusing on that physical exercise of removing the unhealthy and algae infested leaves I mean it's not perhaps the most glamorous aquascaping job you can do but I think it's important to kind of show these processes and um, perhaps you know a couple of years ago I would have just given up just it's too much hassle to, to fix this I'll just get some brand new plants use the opportunity to create some new content you know fancy new content new layouts which is very popular step by steps but not everyone can afford to do that and not everyone wants to do that so I don't want to do that I want to fix these problems and learn from it myself and then hopefully pass that learning on to you and it might not work you know we might do this and it'll look good in the short term for the next few weeks and then the algae may come back and that'll be even more learning and uh, one thing I've learned over the last few years is to embrace failure or perceived failure and mistakes because they are by far giving you the most opportunity to learn and grow as an aquascaper and as a human. Okay, time to address the area of Kowloon now. Good idea just to sort of wave your hand a little around just to dislodge any loose detritus and algae. You can see some new growth here. So it's not all doom and gloom, you know, it's not all dying off. It's going to be a case of just being patient and allowing the plants to adapt. You know, they were taken out of a layout from Dave's place. Any change of environment is potentially going to stress that plant. They are loosely planted in the soil, so I could undo that. You can see the inner, the inner crown, so to speak, is healthy, and then the outer isn't so healthy. So I can just peel back those unhealthiest leaves all the way back to the rootstock, and that will help, hopefully, create new growth. Any damaged leaves are worth removing the plant will focus its energy on growing new leaves rather than repairing old ones. I mean, the roots are relatively healthy. They're not going brown, which is a good sign. So, in theory, it should do okay. Now you'll notice maybe some dragon stone underneath the stone. That was to act as a support to give some more height to the main stone. Um, that's pretty much all looking unhealthy. I'll leave that one. Um, but as the yellow caron spreads and the hair grass grows around it, it will disguise that so you won't see it so much. Now, on the whole, this, these aren't looking too bad. So I think I'll just leave those for now. What we'll do next is just focus on the wanted events this. So I'm going to remove all of that. I was hopeful this would form a lovely background curtain. But I have, I've never really succeeded with this plant in my home tanks, which is always disappointing when you can't grow a species, but you know, it is what it is. I do have very hard water and that does limit the potential success of many, many plant species, unfortunately. Hmm. That one is really quite healthy. I'm tempted to pop that into the 400. Just does a little detailing. There's a couple of blades which are covered in algae. I'll get rid of those. Really interesting how some leaves get covered and others stay really healthy. Okay, here's a good example. You can see some really great new growth in the center there. So that is a good sign that the plant will grow healthily in the long term. Just need to get rid of these old leaves which have obviously struggled to adapt. Excuse Betty in the background. She is definitely the no noisier out of Tommy and Betty. The pigeons again. I wonder if that would look good in the front there. Okay looking a lot better now already which is great news. Next job is to prepare some Eleocharis persilla commonly known as mini hair grass. This is Tropical 1-2 Grow, my favourite plant product. 
so many individual plants there already adapted to grow underwater. So the most open areas, the empty areas on the current hair grass carpet, I will plant with this portions of the mini hair grass. I'll prepare this now for those that don't know how to prepare hair grass, really, really straightforward. Remove the whole lot like so. Divide this up into as many portions as you like. You could probably get a hundred or so easily if you wanted to out of there and then plant with tweezers, but make sure you do wash off the liquid um, growth media because it can cause algae. Here's a top tip to prepare hair grass in particular. It tends to grow in like a concentric kind of formation. So you can actually unwind it almost like a, I don't know, something that you unwind. <laughs> so this is just a container with old aquarium water in. And now we can spend as long as we like separating that into as many portions as we like. I'm going to take my time doing that. I love this process, just touching the plant, separating them, being mindful during the whole process. Have you noticed? And all of you have had moments like this. All of you have had moments when you're really not grasping, you're not really pushing it away. Maybe you're just involved in something you love doing. And for a moment, you kind of forget yourself, right? Because you're not trying to grasp hold of something. You're not trying to push something away. And when you're not trying to grab hold or push away, you kind of forget yourself. You ever noticed? Or you're really involved in something. Something consumes your imagination or your creativity or challenges your mind to such an extent that it, it, it's, you're completely engulfed in it. You're, you're engaged totally, right? And when you're engaged totally, then you, you forget about yourself too. There's no yesterday. There's not the little mistake you made yesterday or 10 years before or there's not a worry about the future, about tomorrow. For a moment, you're completely and utterly engaged. You've kind of forgotten yourself in an activity, right? So truly great musicians master that art. More often than not, they master it within a limited area of their life when they grab hold of their instrument, you know, where they're, they're grabbing hold and plugging in their electric guitar, they're grabbing their violin or whatever they're, whatever they're doing. Just a few weeks ago, a friend invited me to San Francisco and occasionally we go to jazz concerts in the city and he invited me to go to a jazz concert and you sit down and you watch these amazing, amazing musicians play and they're like these embodiments of this absolute complete paradox and yet you know to get to where they got musically not only did they need to be very talented but they actually had to work really really hard right they had to engage in a in a profound discipline for years and years and years and years and years and years a very self-conscious self-oriented discipline right and yet here they are on stage and you can just watch them and you can feel it. You can see it in their faces. You can hear it in their music that they've forgotten about the discipline. They've forgotten about the self that's done all the practice for all those years. And there's just music happening, right? And you can feel it when someone's in that place. It's the music then is beautiful. The person is beautiful. The, the feeling is is beautiful and perhaps it's so beautiful that it gets you to forget yourself for a bit. There's a kind of, I don't know, a kind of alchemy or kind of, it's kind of a modern shamanic act actually, that you can engage somebody in such a way that you're changing their consciousness. You're kind of having a moment where you're both participating in something that's bigger than yourself. Yeah. And yet intimately, you at the same time in that sense it's kind of it's its own kind of spiritual act right and it's very meditative in in the sense that when you first learn to meditate there's usually an a, a, there's a discipline to it right you're assuming voluntarily a constraint right? i won't move for 30 minutes doesn't seem like much of a constraint until you try to do it for the first time 
He goes, this is a bigger constraint than I thought it was. <laughs> this isn't quite as simple as I thought it was, but you're embodying any kind of discipline involves a voluntary, hopefully voluntary, <laughs> kind of constraint, right? And a sort of discipline, like I'm gonna do this one thing instead of the infinite variety of other things that I can be doing. I'm gonna do this one thing. That's what I mean by a kind of constraint. And like being a musician, when you first start to meditate, it heightens your sense of self. It heightens it. It can heighten it to such a degree that like I could say, let's simply pay attention to your breath. And then your breath was doing perfectly fine until I said that. You ever had that experience? Just watch your breath. And all of a sudden it seems like you somehow forgot to breathe smoothly. You know, it gets a little, ah, uh, it tightens up and right. That's, that's a physical expression of self-consciousness, right? So you thought you were going to improve your breath and all of a sudden you're gasping for breath simply because you're just trying to watch it, you know? After a while, something in you realizes that that's, you can actually watch something without trying to grasp at it. And... Thank you.